morning, Saturday. What's the date, Bill? Saturday. Saturday. Second, is it? Yeah, second. second. Um, had a nice sleep. Um, listened to the trains go by and birds singing and band doors slamming. And, oh. um, heard about every noise you can hear apart from bite alarms, really. Yep. But, um, not too disheartened because we've woken up today to an absolutely beautiful spring day. It's probably about 16, 17 degrees already. Um, and we're still at this lovely wind just pushing in here this south, southwesterly. Um, I saw a little walk around with the Polaroid so we didn't spot anything. And um, we don't know whether it's alive yet or dead, <laughs> but it's in a, it's in a, a rested position. <laughs> it's a, a little pike, a little jack pike. And we'll have a look down here. Look at that, when I put the Polaroids on the, uh, camera. On the camera. No Polaroids? Polaroids, look at that. Polaroid lenses are. Yeah. I think you can get them, can't you? Yeah. There you go, the proof's in the pudding with Polaroids anyway. Get a set. Like I have. <laughs> Look so Chinese in the mornings, my eyes just shrivel up. <sighs> what should we do? Um, recast, do you reckon? Yeah, I'll, I'm thinking about recast. I'm going to try and get in, get in my little cove over there. So I can only get so far from the parallel, really. Mate, look. So you've got a bit of bait in there, didn't you, yesterday? Well, only on the outside of the greenery is, mate. Yeah. <coughs> the weather is perfect for, for a bait. Yeah. Right. <coughs> Alright. Um, just thought I'd... Just going through my routine at the minute, my morning routine. And, uh... I just thought I'd uh, show you a few little tips of um, when you're on these long sessions. Um, obviously, it's always a, a good thing to keep yourself clean. Um, so I'll bring a wash kit with me, um, and you know what I mean, just uh, sort myself out. Like the main parts, obviously, you ain't gonna have a shower unless, I suppose, you've got a solar shower or something, and you don't mind getting naked at the side of the bank. It's up to you. But um, what I do. So I just I bring my wash kit with me. I've got some baby wipes in it. I've actually got some more baby wipes. A towel, just dry myself off. Flannel, a little bar of soap, toothbrush, toothpaste, and uh, a little collapsible dog bowl. Just got some water in which I've just boiled up. That's actually too hot. Oh. Um. Yeah. So just bring all that stuff with you. you can keep yourself clean. Obviously, there's there's key areas where bacteria is going to build up. Um, more than, than usual, which is obviously your privates, uh, your armpits, um, and you obviously want to make yourself that your face and hands are clean as well. But there's a set routine to do it in, alright, because obviously you don't want um, 
you don't want to be washing your face just after you wash your balls. You know what I mean? So always uh, what I do, clean my teeth. Um, obviously with clean water or you can use that water that you've just put in now. But spit the toothpaste obviously out on the ground. Don't spit it back into your bowl because otherwise you'll be washing your face with with uh, like toothpaste residue. Um, do that, then wash your face and your hands. Get them nice and clean. Then I do my armpits. Then I do my uh, the private areas. Um, now obviously you can, if you want, you know what I mean, wash your whole body if you want. You know what I mean, your back and your neck and whatever you want. Depends how sweating you've been and how grotty you feel, or what have you. Um, but just remember, do the the armpits and the balls last because uh, that's where the bacteria builds up the most. Um, yeah, so it's simple, do you know what I mean? Like I say, just get the you know, thingy and like, bring a little wash kit with you and just keep yourself nice and clean. Sometimes I bring a, I know it sounds stupid, I bring a comb with me because my hair, you see like now it looks like Lego man's hair all stuck on my head and I just give it a brush and what have you, but I haven't brought that with me this time. So, uh, yeah, there you go, I'll see you in about I'll see you on the next vlog where I'm nice and clean again. Would you believe it? The, uh, the old battery's just died on the camera, so I've just had to rush over to get Ashley's one. Anyway, next point. Uh, obviously, bring change your clothes. Um, just changed my T-shirt now. Got a uh, spare trousers. And importantly, spare socks. All right, if you wear pants, bring some spare pants with you over as well. Um, I don't really wear them when I'm fishing, to be honest with you. I normally wear long johns if I'm going to wear anything. I've got spare ones of them in my bag, but I'm not putting them on today. It's gorgeous weather. Funny enough, these trousers actually turn into uh, into shorts. But um, what I wanted to say, actually, was uh, see these new trackies that I've got on, these camo ones, pocket on the side and that. I saw uh, a video called a DVD, and uh, I think it was Daryl Peck and all that, and they're wearing, like, tracker... Was it tracker? Yeah, tracker tracksuit bottoms. I thought, oh, they look comfy in that. And then I looked at the price of them on, well, for sale. I was like, oh, I ain't paying that. So uh, I went on eBay, typed in uh, camouflage tracksuit bottoms, or camouflage joggers or something like that. Come up, I got these for a tenner. So I was very happy with that. And they are super comfy and everything like that. So, But obviously I've had them on for two days now, so I'm going to change them and put my me, uh, me camo... Con what is it? Camo stream on. That's what it was. All right, yeah, cool. Oh my God! So how Fred is am I right now? Okay, first of all, bailiff come round. He wanted to check my rigs, so um, no problem with that. Brought him in, and then he went. He says, "Where are you fishing up there?" And he said, "Oh, look." He said, uh, "You want to fill it in?" He says the people make mistakes here of fishing for one fish at a time. He says you want to fill it in because if there's any up the back. Um, they'll come out and get on your grub and etc etc so I went oh ok cool right. so I start spotting and I'll show you so obviously I'm up the back I'm out there so I started spotting just past there I don't know how far it is I mean I was getting good distance on it and uh, as I'm spotting the wind's picking up, picking up I mean look at the waves and the water at the minute the mental the wind's picking up so I'm having to compensate by coming right. So I'm sort of like aiming here, and then it's drifting. It's, as it's landing, it's going bang straight in there. Anyway, I've just lost my spot in there, in the tree. So before that, um, obviously, when you're using braid, you need to keep it wet. Otherwise, you get things called wind knots. Me being stupid, obviously, I wet it at the beginning, but then I totally forgot to keep it moist. I mean, after every sort of like three or four casts out, you need to um, wet it again, if, especially if it's windy like this, it just dries your, your braid out, so uh, as I've got the cast out, it went doom, 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 fucking all wrapped around the rings, I was like, oh my gosh, so I've just had to cut a load of braid off, I mean, look, I don't know if you can see that, that's all the braid I just had to cut off, I got it all down there, I was like, oh my god, and then obviously carried on, I thought, right, here we go, let's get over that, let's carry on spotting, and I'm spotted in, and then I overcompensated in the tree. So I am a bit annoyed at the minute. 
Yeah, I mean, my other rod's still in. You can see it hanging there, look. And my rig on it. I need to redo that and get it out. The wind's just mental. It's going to take me into that tree, but... You know what I mean? Got to do it, ain't I? Got to keep my chin up. All right, let's get it done then. All right. Hello. Well, here it is, Kadak number two. Bill's good advice, I went for the Kadak and this is the first time I've used it. A little bit of spray oil on there and this is the result. Black pudding, mushrooms, sausages, little ones and big ones. Oh. <laughs> Smoky bacon, look at that bacon man. Oh, delish. Absolutely perfect. Um, two eggs but I lost half of it down the side cause and it, broke the yolk and broke the yolk <laughs> so that's Bill's that one hey. <laughs> I'm nice like that um, so yeah as always we're having a munch so let's head the car for having a munch um, yeah well impressed with this um, got my new greedy pig set here as well got everything you need in it cups cutlery big platter plates which we're missing because you like a bit of grub, don't we, Bill? We love a bit of grub, mate. We love a bit of grub in here. Um, corkscrew, uh, yeah, towels, it's awesome. £29.99, but, you know, what's the main things you need in life? You need food and you need carp, didn't you? <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what it's all about. So, I'll let Bill chat for a bit because I'm about to plate this up now. So, I finally got my second run in. Put a bigger bag on than usual. Still punched it out, got it in. Howling with the wind, but um, oh, I just need to calm down, have a bit of brekkie, and I'll be all right. So, uh, yeah, sign off. Hello, <laughs> it's half past one in the afternoon, and uh, Saturday, on Saturday. Oh, your phone's ringing. Yeah, you just video, sir. Yeah, uh, Bell's just had to go and get his phone. Um, yeah, it's half past one on a Saturday. Um, um, I've decided to change tactics a little bit. Um, I've got a method feeder out. Now, I know people have caught on it in here, um, so let's see what goes. We've got a little cell dumbbell, washed out cell dumbbell. It's quite firm though, so it's, it's withstand the cast and that. Um, still ploughing into here, the wind and the deeper section. I think people are favouring the, uh, the shallows this time. Um, a few fish have come out there. But they do move around very quickly in here apparently, so um, hopefully they come onto the wind. Um, right, Bill is currently fishing down that channel. I don't know whether you can see that. Straight down there. Right, it's, um, it's getting twilight now, 20 to 8 on the Saturday night. Needless to say, we still haven't had anything. Um, Ash has been uh, on his right rod, been pumping the method out today, uh, just to see if, if there's any reaction at all. And he had a couple of knocks, didn't you? Yeah. That was about it. Um, his left rod, basically we went down to peg one, which is the, the end peg, end bay it's called. And it goes all the way up, as you can see. Basically it goes all the way up there, right up the back. And uh, we had a little mooch down there today, and well, Ash did anyway. Ash is like the king of spotting fish. And uh, I went, all right, okay. So I thought I saw a fish jumping in. Um, and uh, he'd come up to my, my, up to my beard, and he went, come out there, come and have a look on it. He said, there's a fish going from left to right up the back, carp and that. And I went, you know, oh, oh I'm never going to see it. Looks, and he's, come out. I was like, oh my god, right, I says, well, it's your choice, I've got to move, or you've got to see if you can get a bait down there. So what he's done is he's cast up, up there, on his left hand rod, hoping to, uh, there is fish up there, according to the bailiff, and there's only one way out, so hopefully they'll get caught on Ash's rigs. Um, I've had a zig out today on the right hand rod, at various depths, just in the middle of the channel. Um, sort of like over there somewhere, uh, but I've I've spotted out again tonight. Uh, I've got me other obviously I bring a spare spot with me. The one I lost is just high visiting itself up in that tree up there. But I don't feel too bad because I spotted one a spot down in that tree over there today. So I'm not the only person I like to do it. So um, 
And what have I got now? Just got two up in that in that bay. One on the bottom um, with a uh, my normal bag mix with a little bit of um, coconut pop up on top of the plum, like a snowman. And then uh, I've got a chod out on the plum pop up. There's loads of spot mix out there now. I'll put about half a kilo of boilies out there because the bailiff come around and he said, he said um, the mistake people make on here is fishing for one bite at a time, which is basically what we do, really, isn't it? Mm. We don't mega bait it. We haven't got any bait boats. So um, I've, tr well, I've tried to fill it in as much as I could. Along, along. Remember when I was talking about that? I call it the green line, but it's, it's basically where there's foliage on that corner and there's foliage just sprouting on, there's another corner, so I call it like the green line. Um, and that's it, that's all we can, that's all we can do at the minute. Ash is cooking up a, a veritable feast there <laughs> on the Kadak. Turkey stir fry, hot and spicy. Delicious. Do you need a hand, mate? Huh? Do you need a hand? No, I'm all right, yeah, mate. Right. Well, I'm all right till I have to serve it anyway. All right. Um, he's learning the ways of, uh, of the Kadak. <laughs> uh, cooked a delicious brunch today, which is amazing. So, uh, hopefully, fingers crossed. Oh, well, I put Boggers out earlier. The little mascot. So I forgot about him. He was in my bag with my pod in, and I ain't been using my pod, so. He's come out. Maybe he'll bring us a bit of luck. I hope so, anyway. I think this is the longest session I've ever done. It's like three odd days, isn't it? <clears throat> I've been here since Thursday, Thursday afternoon. Um, long old session, especially without a fish. Not even one. But we'll see what the night brings. All right, cool. Well, after all his hard work, <laughs> He's caught a tench. Lovely, mate. How are you feeling? Uh, tired, mate. <laughs> tired and... Should have been a gap. <laughs> There's some extender stops down there, look. That's been out all night. That's not a bad tench, mate. Nah, he's all right. oh, get a quick picture, mate. Yeah, get a picture. Alright, signing off.